Hello and welcome to our first Dreamweaver website design project. In this series you'll learn how to build a complete website from start to finish using Dreamweaver CS6. You can use your own images and resources for this project or if you prefer you can download all of the project files shown in these tutorials. You can also get the complete series manual in printed or ebook format along with the high definition video tutorials from wizzybooks.com. In this lesson, we'll work on the positioning of our navigation system. Much like the social media icons at the top here, we want this list of text items to display horizontally. So let's switch over to Dreamweaver. Now I've opened Dreamweaver and I'm looking at the CSS code. So I've selected that and I've also arranged the window so that we're looking at it in split view. That way we can see the code as we enter it and hopefully we'll be able to see the layout of our navigation system as it changes. So again I'm going to add a few different rules here. So I'm going to arrange this code so that we can see it better. Okay, I'm inside the top nav section and the first thing I want to do is to increase the size of the text there. And to do that, I'm going to use font-size and we're going to make this 18 pixels. And we'll come across and click and you'll see the font there for the navigation entries has been increased. Now, to display our social media icons in line, we had to create an extra selector. And this, if you remember, was a descending selector targeting the list items themselves. And as our navigation entries are placed in a list, we can do the same for that here. So I'm just going to come down a couple of lines and I'm going to type in a new selector. And this is going to be top nav ULLI. So that will specifically select the list items in the top nav section. We'll open and close our curly brackets. And then inside there, we'll simply put display inline. And when we come across and click, you'll see that those now jump in line. Again, they're a little bit squashed up at the moment, so we'll work on that in just a second. Now, if we just switch over to our finished web page, you'll notice that we've got this red line above and below our navigation links. So that's what we'll do next. We come back to Dreamweaver. And now we're going to go back up to the top nav selector, place the cursor at the end of the font size code and press enter. Now, we're going to need a border above and below our navigation links and we'll need to set those separately. So we'll start by typing border and top and again we need to declare three values. We need the thickness of the line and we'll make that two pixels. We need the color of the line and we can open up the color dialog box and choose red and you'll see the hexadecimal number for red has been inserted and then the style of the line which is going to be solid finish off with a semicolon then if we come over here and click you'll see that our line has come in above we want exactly the same again for the bottom border so I'm just going to make a bit of space and I'll copy that entry and paste it underneath and then I'll just change top for bottom. So we now have a border set to the top and a border set for the bottom. When we click over here you'll see that border appear. Now you'll notice at the moment that it all looks a little bit squashed the top border is sitting right up next to the social media icons and the bottom border is sitting right on the top of the banner picture. So we need to add a little bit of margin here. So we'll come back over in the code window and we'll press return and we'll type margin and we'll have 10 pixels of margin top and bottom 
but we don't want any margin left or right at this stage. So we'll just leave that set to zero. Finish off with a colon, then we'll come back over and now you'll see that it's spaced out a little bit. It gives us a bit of room between the banner and the bottom border and the social media icons and the top border. The text inside is still quite squashed up. So we're going to need some space above and below this text so that the border's not appearing to cramp the text. We'll do that by using some padding. So we'll type padding and we'll have five pixels of padding top and bottom and zero pixels left and right. So let's come over and click and now you see we've got a little bit of space above and below that text. Now the links themselves are squashed up and what we need to do is put a little bit of space in between each link so that it spaces them out nicely. And we'll do that by adding a little bit more padding. So we'll come down to the top nav ULLI selector and we'll click at the end of the first entry and we'll just type a space and padding and we'll make this five pixels for the top and bottom and 10 pixels for left and right. Again we'll come across and click and now you see our links are spaced out nicely. So we'll save our files at this point. We'll just come down and click save all and we'll come across and view it in our browser. So this is what it looked like before and when we refresh this is what it looks like now. So our website now is really beginning to take shape. We're not going to make any changes to the banner just yet. We'll do that when we start to animate it. But in the next lesson, we'll work on this content area and footer area. So we'll format this again using CSS so that it looks a little tidier and a little less squashed up. If you found this series of videos helpful and you want to receive updates on video tutorials as they're released, why not subscribe to my channel? And don't forget to like and share it with your friends.